What's going on my friends? Welcome to another voiceover style video as we look at a customer trip in which the beta struggled pretty heavily. So it's important to get into the right headspace for these. You know, I am imagining a case where we're in the future at some undisclosed time where this is a transportation as a service and doesn't require a driver in the seat. Right now it does. I am required to be here alert and ready to take over at all times, which is why you see my hand hovering around the yoke. I am looking around, I am observant, I am making sure that nothing can put my customer in danger. In that regard, using this system is the same in a legal sense as using cruise control or any other ADAS system. So anybody who wants to hop in the comments and saying I'm breaking this or that rule, save your breath. I'm not. I've heard it a million times and we're moving on. So moving on, as we approach this first left turn here, you might recognize the area. Any of you who've been following me for a while will realize that this is the start of the gauntlet or the Friars Challenge from the earlier days. And this is the left turn coming up to the 163 merge. Now it's important to remember if you haven't seen these videos that right around here things can get a little jolty and uncomfortable and the vehicle can make some sharp adjustments that'll throw you around a little bit and that is what I want to avoid. So that is why after this SUV passes I actually take over because I can kind of foresee some jitteriness in the yoke and there's not the longest amount of time to take the opportunity to get into this on ramp to get onto the 163. Now this is also as you can see as we're making around this corner a very busy time of the morning. So rather than letting the system try to deal with this, I take my opportunity to get in there. And you can even see through the left mirror, that car is pretty close. And unfortunately, that's just the level of aggression required to actually get onto the 163 sometimes because people will not create an opening. It doesn't matter if it's a, a lane for an on-ramp, off-ramp. That's just the lack of etiquette with human drivers. So knowing that, I preemptively I took over before we even got to the on-ramp and just did that maneuver myself. And you'll notice the customer's still happily texting away on their phone, unaware that anything's really going on. The majority of this ride, you know, 99% of it is all autonomous, except for those moments where I do intervene to to prevent discomfort. Now here we are coming up to an area that I thought was actually fixed for a while because this is the exit where usually the car would kind of sway in the middle but it had been doing a really good job of going all the way to the right. However, you'll notice I forced the vehicle to stay to the right which in turn forces a disengagement because this was a scenario where go figure with a paying customer the car wants to swerve back into the left turning lane or left exit lane I should say and rather than letting that happen I just decided to apply enough force to the wheel to prevent it. Now while I typically skip through the boring parts of highway travel and such the next disengagement scenario was close enough that I just let this play through so right now we're on the 163 merge to the 805 highway heading north and I already can tell that this could get a little iffy you'll notice my eyes shifting around a lot as I look at this box truck and the situation unfolding because this is a merge from two lanes to one and then on to the 805 so here I see an 18 wheeler coming up and know that okay yeah I need to just take over get around these two vehicles get through them and pass them and then we'll carry on with full self-driving. I've mentioned plenty of times in the past that the system has a bit of a problem with large vehicles. It, it gets a little jittery and, and seemingly paranoid because it's a machine, you know, it's not actually paranoid. But in that regard, again, keeping the customer's comfort in mind, I decided to just get past that situation and continue onward. Now, as we move along here, we're ending, or sorry, we're nearing the end of the drive in the La Jolla region heading into UCSD. And the rest of this goes pretty smoothly. I was actually really impressed here that we got into the left lane and the turning lane in such rapid succession. You can see the excitement in my face there that we actually got through that maneuver. You know, barring the left turn to the 163, the majority of the issues were on the highway. The rest of this was really well done. In fact, through here, it read the speed limit so well that it took me all the way down to about 8 kilometers an hour. So I, I ticked it up to about 25 kilometers an hour, which puts me, you know, around the 15 to 20 mile an hour speed limit going through here. And I'm mainly using this portion to wrap up my thoughts. So the City Streets beta side of 10.69.25.2 is still performing really well. There's a lot of great finesse. Generally, it does better, or I should say generally it succeeds more than it fails on a day-to-day -day basis. However, when it comes to customer trips, because of the switching between software stacks and most of my drives being on the highway, as well as the random little things that can occur that you may have already seen on these other voiceover videos, the reliability rating for customer robo-taxi rides still very, very, very low. I would say below 20% at this point. Again, the robo-taxi reports will be coming back in the near future once we finally get version 11, which is so close. All these videos I'm seeing on Twitter of it in action are just a massive tease. The first things to come out will be the gauntlet runs, followed by a robotax report finally putting all of 10.69's builds into one category, showing the success slash failure of robotaxis, disengagements, interventions, the causation donut, all the good stuff. But until then, I'm doing more of the same, trying to get good customer content and finding opportunities like this to show the different areas in San Diego where the system struggles, whether it's a disconnect between the two softwares or just an outsized challenging course or 
destination or route, however you want to put it. It's not too difficult to imagine a future where you can have certain areas just kind of geofenced off because they're unnecessarily complex. But for the time being, it's fun to see just what the system can and can't handle. It surprises me sometimes where I think it's going to do really bad and it ends up doing really well. And then sometimes on the simplest, you know, straight line of a route, it'll not do so well. But that is the nature of testing. I hope you guys enjoy these voiceover videos. I'm still trying to get my timing down for the commentary and the best way to make it flow. So <laughs> any feedback is definitely appreciated. Before we get going, I wanted to throw out a quick shout out to my two newest members, Richard Long and Nani the Questionable. I appreciate it, guys. It's a real privilege to have you, and I hope that you continue to love the content as it comes and the perks that come with your membership tier. So with that being said, let's get back to me in the car for some closing thoughts in real time. It's right over here? Yeah, right here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, that was a fantastic example of how difficult a drive can be and how problematic some of the situations can be. Unfortunately for this trip, it started out basically going through the dreaded uh, 163 merge scenario from the Friars Challenge and the gauntlet. And today was a good example of traffic being really bad and people not wanting to let you over. So that's why I, I took over at the left turn onto the on-ramp because it was going to take way too long and was getting uncomfortable. You'll notice that every time that I disengaged in that video, it was keeping the comfort of the passenger in mind. So when it comes to using the turnstock over the brake or whatever, you know, those are my reasonings. The guy the whole time probably didn't realize that most of that trip, I would say 99% of that trip was autonomous. The 1% that I drove was just to make sure that it stayed smooth during some complicated maneuvers. But on to the next customer. <laughs> 